It's called revival. And revival is good because out of it, people get saved. They come to Yeshua or Jesus at first, but they are stepping onto the escalator. And the people that are already in the Word, as another lady shared with me when the revivals of the old days, back in our Baptist days, got turned deeper into the Word. And through that, they've come and the Shabbat grabs them. Then the Torah grabs them. And they're on that progression. So the revival has worked in two ways real well. That we have to look at it biblically. Because that word's been thrown around like righteous. That word's been thrown around like holy. And it's been misconceived. Because I say revival, revival to what? Revival to what? Am I, am I getting revived back to my Baptist doctrine? Or am I getting revived back to my Mormon doctrine? Or am I getting revived back to the ways of God? Teshuvah, repent. Revival to what? Deuteronomy, first we look at Deuteronomy 12, 8 through 9. And keep that in our head as we look at some verses. You shall not at all do as we are doing here today, every man doing whatever is right in his own eyes. For as yet you have not come to rest in the inheritance which the Lord your God is giving you. It's basically saying, if we are all doing whatever we think is right in our own eyes, we haven't come into his rest. We haven't entered his rest. So we have to say, he says, you shall not do at all as we are doing here today. Everyone doing what is right in his own eyes. Now I'm talking, did we cross over? To quit being of us. Psalms, revive, revive, revival to what? Psalms 119, 25. My soul clings to the dust. Revive me according to your word. Revive me according to your word. Psalms 119, 93. I will never forget your precepts, for by them you have given me life. By them you have given me life. Revival is a form of receiving life. Being quickened. Psalms 119, 107. I'm afflicted very much. Revive me, O Lord, according to your word. He doesn't stop. He doesn't say, revive me, O Lord, and stop. He says, revive me according to something. According to his realm. His ways, his word. 119, 154. Plead my cause and redeem me. Revive me according to your word. 119.37 Turn away my eyes from looking at worthless things and revive me in your way. Psalms 80.18 Then we will not turn back from you. Revive us and we will call upon your name. Revive us and we will call upon your name. Calling upon his name is not just standing there saying, Oh, Yahweh. That's not calling upon his name. Calling upon his name is saying, Adonai, show me where I must walk, what I must do that's pleasing in your sight. Calling upon his name is calling upon his ways. His name represents a lifestyle. So we don't just call upon his name. When we call upon his name, we're calling upon his instructions, which actually, if you think about it, is Yeshua. Yeshua was the walking set of instructions. Psalms 119, 149, Revival. Hear my voice according to your loving kindness. O Lord, revive me according to your justice. Revive me according to your justice. According to some translations say according to your ordinances. Deuteronomy 12, 3. You shall destroy their altars, break their sacred pillars. There's one of their sacred pillars. Now, this is uh, that, that Peter Square, they call it. In Rome, that obelisk was taken out of Egypt. That's very old. That's an old one. That goes back thousands and thousands of years. But what did they put on top of it? Their own perception. So now we've got syncretism. We've got a, a phallic symbol that represents a Seirah of Egypt the sun god, and they put this cross on top of it. So now we have syncretizing. 
But today I can't go in and destroy that. But what I can do is I can stay as far away from them as I possibly can. This parsha back then is to guide the Hebrews in their spiritual ascent into the land. And for us today, these parshats are to guide us as ones who crossed over into our spiritual ascent into the Torah. It's to guide us. Today for us, Parshat is to guide us for a spiritual ascent into his Torah. Revive us, Ezra 9, 8 through 9. And now for a little while, grace has been shown from the Lord our God to leave us a remnant to escape and to give us a peg in his holy place that our God may enlighten our eyes and give us a measure of revival in our bondage. For we were slaves, yet our God did not forsake us in our bondage. But he extended mercy to us in the sight of the kings of Persia to revive us, to repair the house of our God, to rebuild its ruins, and to give us a wall in Yehuda and Yerushalayim. And this is what we are doing today. We are all being little by little revived to repair the house of God. He says, this is the tabernacle now. We're being revived into repairing his house. And if we all revive, or if we allow to be revived into repairing our house according to his ways, then we can all be one. No more opinions. We can all become one.